Hi, this is Neil Walters with mylifeismymessage.net. In this video, I'd like to show you a demonstration of just some play code I put together dealing with the database called Cassandra and Microsoft C Sharp using Visual Studio. And I've created a little PowerPoint slide here to walk you through what I did. And so that's what we're going to go through. So I just wanted to play with this. I had some time. And in the past, I've been working with BizTalk for like 14 years now. And sometimes I've stored some XML messages in a SQL XML column. And I was toying with the idea of storing or archiving files in a blog, a blob actually, a blob of some kind, in a database or text field. The problem with Windows NT NTFS file system is that if you have like over 5,000 or 10,000 files in a directory, it can be very, very slow to load that direct directory and to manipulate all the files. So I'm thinking about maybe just throwing them all in a database. BizTalk processes all kinds of files, uh, text, EDI, XML, CSV, and so on. But this demo was not so much based around BizTalk, just how to get files from the disk into the blob and how to get them out again. In the real world, the carefully architected folder name would give me an I, uh, would give me an idea of the application name, who sent the file, and where it was destined. So there'd be other factors that I would store in the database, like who the file was from, where the file was going, that kind of information. But I didn't do that in this little simple demo. So I created a table and I downloaded this tool from Dev Center called uh, a, a tool called Dev Center from a company called DataStax. And I use that to create my table. And this is the table definition. If you want to read that, you can pause it and kind of look at it more closely. It's fairly simple. And then here's the C-sharp code I'm going to do in just a minute. But let me actually go to that server now and show you this Dev Center tool. OK, so this is the tool from Dev Center here. Let me shrink it down. We can see the whole thing. And I'm going to delete the rows I have in the table now before I start. But you notice I'm not connected to my database. That's because my database is not actually up at the minute. So with Cassandra, you have a bat file and you have to uh, run that. So here I think, uh, just a second, I can get the right place. Okay, so here was the command window. If I do dir star dot bat, I'm in a directory. I installed it called Apache Cassandra 3.10 bin. And there's a file called cassandra.bat. And if I run that, that basically starts up the database engine. And that little DOS window then, or command prompt window, will have to stay open throughout the length of your session while you're playing with the database. And you can kind of ignore that error. I forget what it is, but it's not really a PowerShell error. And now the thing's coming up, and you'll see it spits out a lot of almost too much information that I don't need. And now we're going to go back to uh, this Dev Center tool here. And let's see if I can refresh my connections. How do I do that? Okay, looks like I don't have to refresh them, but like here there's a thing called a key space. So my key space was called Neil Demo. And so now here's my command, delete from file archive. And to run that, I click the little green arrow here. And it says there's an error. Okay, let me just think real quick. It is called file archive, create table file archive. Oh, maybe you need the semicolon at the end. They call this SQL, and it's not SQL, but it's CQL. Okay, I did forget. When you get an error like this, it says there is a syntax error. You can click the details. It says no viable alternative at input semicolon. That doesn't tell me a lot, does it? I think it may be wanting a where clause. Okay, so here's one I ran earlier. Let's do uh, execute on that. Well, now we're getting uh, the connection problem. All hosts tried. Okay, so we have a connection problem. Okay, so what I did, I went off the video there. I just closed and reopened my connection, repicked my key space name, and I added this where clause, and it worked perfectly now. So. 
Now we can get on with the demo. So I do have a select command already canned up here. And just so we don't want the whole thing. Now we don't want the where clause. Okay, so there we ran it. It shows there's no data in the table. So now we're going to go back to the PowerPoint and look at uh, the next step. Okay, so when I did all this, I found one difficulty, and that was just simply how to read a file into memory and how to write it back out to disk, but it had to work with any type of file. And I first discovered it was work, my CSVs and my TXT files were working just fine. In other words, simple ASCII files. But when I tried an XSL spreadsheet, it wasn't working. So I learned that I had to use a stream. And so I had to use read all bytes instead of read, read all text. And that reads it into a byte array. And then you can write it back out with write all bytes. And so this is just a little small chunk of code to verify that we could read a file in the memory and write it back out to disk. And that the file that was written out to disk would be the exact same size and would actually do a file compare. It would match 100% to the original file. So that was important. It had nothing to do with Cassandra, but I had to get that little piece down. So here's the design of my little test program. These are my command line parameters. And so I'm going to say like archive and some test folder on my disk. And it's going to archive that from the disk to the database. And then I'm going to turn around and extract that data from the database to some other directory on the disk. So I'm going to have a restore directory. Okay, so it's kind of like a backup restore program, but it doesn't have all the full features of a full backup program. It doesn't check the archive, the deflag byte, that kind of stuff. So now here's the code in C Sharp. And in a prior blog on my website, I talked about how I downloaded the C Sharp plugins for Visual Studio using a NuGet. And uh, you can read about that. So here I'm going to say the <clears throat> I'm going to get my DB address and my key space from my config file, my app config file. And then I'm going to connect to my cluster. So I'm going to say cluster.builder add con contact point using my DB address, which I think is 127.001, I think, dot build. And then I'm going to connect to my key space. Okay. The next step is to do the archive. <clears throat> so this is the SQL command I built. And <clears throat> at first I did it all within text and I was using string substitutions. But then when I got into this byte array and realized that, of course, text files are going to have uh, some special characters in them. They're going to have single quotes and that kind of thing. Plus, I wanted to avoid any SQL injection issues. So I came up with this kind of SQL statement where we're going to prepare the statement and then execute it with the bind. So we're going to have the substitution values here. I think there's eight of them. And then here are the eight variables that I'm going to substitute into this insert statement. Okay, my sample program for this is on GitHub, and I will put the address for that at the bottom of the video, uh, like on YouTube. And so the program is called Cassandra File Tube Tool because it reads files, stores them in Cassandra, and then pulls them out of Cassandra and writes them to disk. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this uh, command line parameter here. Since I'm going to be running it as a debug start in, within Visual Studio, I'm going to go to my properties here. And I'm going to paste the command I want to run there. And I want to use directory 3. And the only thing that's not too amazing here is, I, OK, this is what we talked about, getting the, uh, the DB key and the DB address. Let me show you the app config file. There it is. The, uh, the key for DB address is 127.001. And then my key space happened to be Neil Demo. Okay. And then after that, it checks the arguments, not too fancy. It says if it's an archive, call this. If it's an extract, call this. So we're going to run it the first time and run the archive. And so we have the simple C Sharp code that basically just iterates through all the files in a folder. And I don't do recursive or anything. I just keep it at the first level. And then for each file, we do the get the byte stream from the disk with read all bytes. And then we do this uh, insert statement. This was my first insert statement. Just I left it in there so you could see the other way to do it. And this is the better way to do a, an insert statement using the bind and the prepare. And then we do a store and we catch any errors. And then that's it. 
and uh, I'm going to show you the files on the disk next. Okay, this is my favorite little file tool called Total Commander. I'm going to go to Test Directory 3 here, and on both sides, I'm going to make sure the restore is empty. So I'm going to delete all the files in the restore. And these are the files we have here. So I have a combination of XML files. I also have one of my XML files is UTF-16. And I have some Unicode in there just to prove that that can be, can be stored and archived and retrieved. I have Excel, a PDF, a zip file, a CSV, and a text file. So that's, I think, a fairly good sampling of files. Okay. So now we're going to go back to C Sharp and run it. So I'm just going to do debug start. Whoops, what happened there? Debug. On another, sorry, I'm on another machine, so my key, keyboard shortcuts were different. And here's the little runtime window. Oh, I have it in debug mode, so I have to hit F5 just to get past that. And you see it flashed by already, and it's done. So we didn't get to read anything there, but it doesn't display a whole lot. So now I'm going to go back to the Dev Center tool and run a query. Okay, so here we are, select star from Neil Demo Archive and hit the run. And you can see what I'm storing here. I'm storing the machine name that I'm running on, the file folder that it grabbed it from, test archive three, the name of the file, and then there's the blobs with the file content. And it actually gives you the length of the blobs, which is kind of nice. Then we have the date that I stored the record in the database. Notice this is the date the file was created on the disk, the date the file was modified from the disk. I got the extension of the file in case I just want to do a query on that later. And then this is the day, the, the date, the time the row was stored in the table itself in the database. Okay, so now the next step is talk about retrieving, and I'll show you the PowerPoint again here. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say PowerPoint because this is a Google slide. Okay, so we have here now the, uh, that was the insert logic. Now we have the select logic. So here I'm going to say select star from file archive. I'm already connected to Neil Demo, where file folder equals, and I'm going to pass it a folder name from my arguments. And then I basically um, pull out the archive file name, the new, and then I build the new file name. It's based on a parameter I pass it, so I can restore it to a different place on the disk than where I archived it from. And I get the byte array out of the data row that was returned from the ADO record set here, and then I just display some information, and then I write those files to the disk, and then we'll talk about the conclusion conclusion in just a minute here. Okay, so to run this in the other direction now. Um, the parameters we pass it is the name of the folder that I restored it, that I, that I archived it from, and then the name of the folder I want to archive it to. So I'm actually using Neil Archive 3 here for this demo today. So I'm going to put that in my project properties startup commands right here. And just remember that from Total Commander, the restore directory over here was empty, right? And now we're going to debug and start, run this. This over here. Okay, it's already done. And now we're going to go back to Total Commander. And there are the files on the disk. And this is one thing that's cool about. Uh, this tool with Total Commander is I can pick a couple of files, like I want to find the complex X path there. I can see they're both 1726 in size, and I can do this, and I can do a file compare. You do, uh, it's FY for shortcut. Um, I'm used to just pressing Y there, compare file by content. It says the two files are identical. If they were not identical, it would show you like which lines were different. And there, everything seemed to be identical because I've already tested this. And let's just sort by size here. So you can see the sizes all match. And so that's the kind of the proof of concept. So now we're going to go back to the slideshow here and talk about kind of what's next. So after doing this whole thing, I basically learned that, you know, it was a fun experiment and I'm glad I did it. But 
it's probably not practical to archive all my files in Cassandra, and there's a couple reasons for that. Number one is I learned that the size of a blob in the community edition is limited to 64 megabyte. Now for BizTalk, I would say most of our files are under 64 megabytes, but you know, you never know, we may have some larger files. So I was originally interested in using this just to archive BizTalk files. And uh, you know, I might have some files bigger than that. I'm probably gonna end up using SQL Server if I do this, but I was just playing to see what these NoSQL databases could do. If I continued forward, I would need to add more features if I really wanted to have a, like a backup archive system. But again, I was really just testing moving files around in and out of a database. But I would need to handle subdirectories. Uh, I would need more work on the machine name. So I added machine name, but I would need more support for archiving files and extracting to multiple machines. I would need to be able to handle updates of files and or versioning of files if I was going to do a real archive backup system. I found that Cassandra is great for writes and key storage retrieval, but the big thing is it's not so great for querying and filtering. So, you know, it is not a SQL database. So when you start doing queries on columns, that's where it gets bad. So one thing I've done in the past is I've used Microsoft SQL. They have something called an XML column. So I can store, if it's XML, I can store it in XML column. And then if it's not XML, I can store it in a blog. And then with the XML columns, they can actually be indexed and you can run XPath commands against them. So Microsoft SQL is probably, again, my better solution, but you know, this was experimental, so I wanted to play. And now I have ideas what I might be able to do with Cassandra in the future. Um, so it's, they, they say it's great for things like logging, like if you log an archive, stuff like that, where you store tons of data, but maybe you're not pounding the heck out of it when you're querying. Uh, if I do decide to archive files, I'll stick with Microsoft SQL Server. With I already said all that. Uh, so I like the ability of SQL Server to run XPath commands on XML fields. So just to recap, basically I had some files on a folder. I then wrote a C-sharp program that read them into memory and then stored them into a Cassandra database. And then I use this tool from DevStacks called Dev Center, which you can download. It is a free tool, no expire. And then from there, you can run your, S, your CQL commands, SQL, CQL commands. And then here you can see the examples of what I've run. And like here, if you want to do, a, like say, show me all the, uh, just an example. There was a where, where file extension is equal to CSV. You have to say allow filtering because otherwise he'll say, oh, that query is going to be too slow. And when you add the words allow filtering, then you say, you know, I know what I'm doing. Let me do what I want to do. Okay. This is the file name or the field name now. And OK, I took the dot out of here. So it's not dot CSV. It's just CSV. That was from one of the earlier versions of my program. So you see there's a, an example of one that has a CSV. If I change this to XML, now, of course, I only have like less than 10 rows in my database. So, you know, what would be fun is to benchmark this, is to, to upload, you know, like a million files from my hard, do hard drive into Cassandra and then ben benchmark it when I do a where clause and see how it really turns out. And that's what I would have to do if I really wanted to have more confidence in this, this product. So that's the three XML files from the disk that got archived, and you can see the blob sizes. So that's it, people. I hope you enjoyed it. So we were using C Sharp and Cassandra, reading files from disk, storing them in blobs, and putting them back on disk. So it was kind of a fun project, and shows you gives you ideas what you can do in C Sharp. And if you need that sample code, you can download it from GitHub with the link below. And I'll have this video along with some other blogs that I did regarding Cassandra on my website, which is mylifeismymessage.net. This has been Neil Walters. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.